you're going to play behind me. And then whatever's the... Anyway, fat dap and head slap of the week. Now, the fat dap of the week, I am, I was ambivalent about. I mean, I give all sorts of head slaps. People make me mad all the time. The fat dap of the week, I'm looking at my uh, my NBA board. I'm looking at the standings, and I did not know the Houston Rockets have set a franchise record for wins, 61 so far. And I am convinced that this team, the Houston Rockets, are good enough to get to the NBA Finals. They've won two NBA titles the, when Jordan had his sabbatical in the 90s. But it's been... Over 20 years since they've even been to the finals. So, the onus is on them. James Harden, Chris Paul, et al. They, not the Golden State Warriors, who I think is a walking mash unit. They are the team to beat in these. 61 wins, 31-6 and six at home, 30-8 and eight on the road, which is impressive. I think there are one of two teams. One, I think the only team that won 30 games on the road. So that's a pretty good mark in itself. Fat dap to the Houston Rockets. The thinking man's choice to win the NBA title. Not, this, uh, not the uh, Warriors, almost at the Spurs. Not the Warriors. Not the Thunder. Not the Cavaliers. Not the Raptors. Not the Celtics. But the Rockets. You heard it here first. I think they'll win the title. Now let's get into the head slap of the week. The one that I, I don't know. The debate on who the NFL, I'm sorry, NBA MVP is. Most people are saying that James Harden is by far having the best season of his career. Many people thought he should have won the MVP last year, but because Russell Westbrook had a year where he averaged a triple-double, something that has not had only been done one time in the NBA history, many people thought he should have won the MVP that year, last year. But he didn't. Russell Westbrook won. This year, there are people who are saying that LeBron James should win his fifth, fifth, count him, fifth MVP. And I take nothing away from LeBron James. I think he's a great player. I think he is one of a once in a generation, if not once in a lifetime player. I just think it's the lazy way man's out. It's lazy. It is, oh, well, when Michael Jordan, like Michael Jordan was playing, it was so easy to say, he's the dominant player, give him the MVP. When you had players that won the MVP in years that Jordan didn't, um, off the top of my head, I can think of when Magic Johnson won in one year, and... um, Charles Barkley won in 93 when he led the Suns to the finals. Carl Malone won in back-to-back years. Oh, I take that back. I think he won in 97. I don't think he won in 98. But still, the years that Jordan didn't win it, many people attributed to Jordan fatigue. People were tired of watching Michael Jordan win the MVP. But he still was the the league's best player, far and away. 
the league's best player. This year, LeBron James is one of the best players, if not the best player in the NBA. Far and away, I don't know. Top 10, top 5, top 3. Yes. But, James Harden, I think, is having a transcendent year. James Harden is having the type of year that will garner a crazy contract. James Harden is carrying the Houston Rockets, a team that I've already said, gone on record saying is the front runner for winning the NBA title. They've won 61 games. And you only have uh, the four, I believe, three. No, I take that back. I only have the Warriors who have 54 wins. So you have in the NBA three teams right now that have crossed the 50-win pl- uh, threshold. The Rockets are at 61. And you're telling me it's not the best player on the best team. James Harden should be the MVP. And I rail at the talking heads. And that's right, Stephen A. Smith, I'm talking to you. You dare say that James Harden does not deserve the MVP? And don't get me wrong, I'm an Ohio guy. I love LeBron James. I think he's a great player. But this year, and this year alone, he doesn't deserve the MVP. Yes, the Cavaliers will be trash were it not for LeBron James. That that player is keeping that team afloat, period. But, He's not going to carry them to the title. He might not even carry them to the conference finals. James Harden will lead the Rockets to the title. And for that, I give the media that is not giving James Harden his proper due. The head slap of the week. We'll be back with final thought in just a moment. We're going to wrap it up here on the Hoodwood here in just a moment. But I have a final thought, of course. That's the, the, the one thing I'm doing. Usually I just wrap it up with a fat jack and head slap. But we're going to go with a uh, final thought. College coaches can go where they want. They can come and go as they please. I liken to um, Louisville's new head coach, Chris Mack, who was at Xavier of Ohio for uh, nine years and is their winningest coach of all time. But he decided, his wife, who was a Louisville native, that he wanted to... Happy, happy wife, happy life, decided to take the open job at Louisville. And that in itself, I think, he, you know, he can go where he want. You know, further his money, further his career. The thing I have a problem with, the real problem, is coaches can come, coaches can go. Coaches go where they want. But players can't. A player wants to transfer if he's not a grad student. He has to sit out a year. He has to wait. I, I give the example of Kyle Washington. Played two years at North Carolina State. Decided he wasn't getting enough, getting what he wanted out, so he transferred. But he had to sit out a year. He had to wait. 
a graduate student can stay, can transfer to another school without a year's penalty. Why is that? Why are graduate students able to go where they want without any penalty? Coaches can go where they want, jump jobs, a lot of them do, smaller schools. Now you can even be willing to bet that Loyola Chicago's coach, Porter Moser, will feel a lot of offers from lower echelon SEC and ACC schools that see Moser as the shining beacon someone who can take them out of the wilderness and make them a great uh, team. Look at the coach, um, Andy Enfield, uh, coach of Southern Cal. He parlayed the deep run of Florida Gulf Coast a couple years ago into a huge contract at USC. His players that he recruited, Florida Gulf Coast, they can't go with him. They've got to stay where they're at. But I've said, if you're going to give players a stipend and make this all about education, but you're going to hold the coaches to, I don't know, a standard below what you're demanding of the of your players. And that in itself, I think, is a crime. Well, the music's coming up in my headphones, and you can hear them in the background. That means that our time in the hood is up. Now, we're going to try to do this every week, and I welcome your comments. You can send me an email at kjgreen at blackbandedproductions.com and, you know, show comments, suggestions, topics. You never know. I might just use them as a show topic. I'm always looking for good stuff. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on everywhere. We're going to try to expand the show and reach everywhere. We're going to try to get guests here and try to discuss the topics that make sports. So, come along in the hoodwood. I will see you next week. And it's always been a good time. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, fellow sports fans. And that's it.